On that day the city of Tanjore was destroyed. If the princess, who has not visited the capital for a long time, changes her mind and comes to Tanjore, I wonder what the city's people will be upset about. There was no one in the Chola country who did not know about Princess Kundave's beauty, knowledge, and kindness. There is hardly a person who does not mention his name at least once a day about something. Rumors that the princess would be in Tanjore Palace for this year's Navaratri Vabhava had spread earlier and raised the public's excitement. So, when it was known that he was coming today, a sea of people was waiting at the gate of Tanjore Fort. Like the sea of water that makes a joyful noise in anticipation of the rising of the full moon, this sea of people was also roaring with enthusiasm. Finally, the full moon also rose. Why? Two moons rose at the same time. When Kundave Devi, the vassal of Tanjore Fort, arrived with her entourage, the fort gates opened with a thud. The palace retinue came out to welcome the goddess from inside. In the presence of those retinues were the two reapers. Not only that, behind them came a pearl-studded tusk. When its silk curtains were removed, the Sundaram Mativathanam of the youngest Queen Nandini Devi of Palvur was visible inside. Kundeva came down from the elephant and Nandini from the palanquin. Nandini rushed forward and greeted Kundeva with a bow. Kuntavala smiled and acknowledged the welcome. Seeing those two beauties of the Chola country together there, the enthusiasm of the people overflowed. Nandini Po and Varname, Kundave died Sentamara. Nandini's golden face was round like the full moon, Kuntave's face was slightly elongated like a hand-picked idol shape. Nandini's swarthy black eyes were as white as feathered honey beetles, Kuntave's dark blue eyes shone like the petals of Nilad Balam. Nandini's nose was flat and smooth as if made of ivory. Kundave's nose was slightly elongated and looked like a bald patch of Panirpu. Nandini's slightly thickened petals looked like coral copper dripping with elixir. The thin petals of Kundave turned into nectar-splitting pomegranate buds. Nandini had her hair tied up like a bouquet of flowers. Kundave's hair was arranged like a bell crown symbolizing she is the queen of beauty. It cannot be said that everyone was happy to compare the beauty and decoration of the two women's bells. However, in general, everyone easily realized that both of them were incomparably beautiful and different in organ structure and decoration. Until then, there was some dissatisfaction and anger among the city mandars over Nandini. Everyone worshipped Kundave Prati as their clan deity. But now the youngest Rani of Palvur arrived at the fort gate and welcomed the younger Prati, causing great excitement among the people. While the people were engrossed in happiness like this, the conversation between Nandhinai and Kundave took place in the posture of lightning striking. Devi! Come! Come! We thought you had completely forgotten us. Today we learned that the mercy of the younger Brady is boundless, said Nandini. How so, Rani? Does being far away mean that you have forgotten me? Since you have not come to the old room, can you assume that you have forgotten me? said Kundave. Beetles come of themselves to the honey flower, no call is needed. Anyone will come to the beautiful old array. Is it not the pride of their kindness that they have come to this wretched fort of Tanjavur? What did you say like that? Can we call Tanjavur a city of misery? When beauty itself is imprisoned here? said the youngest brat. I have heard the same, that the emperor has been imprisoned here. No more worries, you have come to free him, have you not? When Nandini said that, electricity appeared in her eyes and disappeared. Beautiful! Not even the Indrati Devas could imprison Sundarashola Chakraborty. How could the lesser mortals? I did not speak of that. I spoke of the beautiful goddess Nandini Devi. Tell me well, Devi. Say this to his ears. The king of Palvur is holding me like he is keeping me in prison. Give me some advice. What is my suggestion? Is not keeping oneself a prison? Is not love a prison? And even more so. Yes, goddess. Moreover, if the love of the old man remains a prison, there is no liberation. What do you call an underground prison? Even those imprisoned in it may come out. 
But... Yes. Ronnie. Moreover, if it is an animal that has pretended to be us, if it is a captive that we have gone in search of, liberation will be difficult. Siddha, Kanagi, Nalayanai, and Savitri who came in the way will not even seek liberation. Aho, what is all the noise there? said Kundawai Prati. Indeed, the clamor was coming from the crowd of women standing a short distance from the castle gate. Kunta and Nandini went near that place. Many women did not understand what was happening at first as they screamed at once. Then it became clear. It was understood that they wanted the younger Prati to visit the palace more often and therefore demanded that restrictions on entry into the fort be lifted for the nine days of Navaratri. Queen! Tell your husband or your brother-in-law to fulfill their request. I will be afraid of these ugly women? What danger will they bring to the Chola Empire? Isn't the command of the Palyavar brothers stretching all the way to the coast? Said Kundave. What is it? stopped by the coast. Beyond the sea goes their authority and authority. The sign of this will soon come. Saying that, Nandini's smile broke Kuntave's heart. What could be the meaning of this negative word, she thought. In the meantime, Nandini signaled Pariya Palyavatariyar to her side and conveyed the women's request and Ilya Prati's wish. What's the opposite of little bratty? said the reaper. Then, they entered the fort amid loud cheers of the people. For a few days from that day, Tanjore was moving and the surrounding areas were immersed in a lot of excitement. When Kundave Devi came to Tanjavur, the Navaratri festival took place. Palyavetare also fulfilled his promise. He allowed people to enter and leave the fort during those ten days without restriction. The gates of the fort were always wide open. There were many gala events going on in the palaces inside the fort and in the outskirts of the town. People gathered in large numbers to see them. In the midst of those gatherings, two full moons often rose together. Seeing that scene, Janasamutram erupted in cheers. But when outside there was the same festive excitement, in the heart regions of those two full moons, volcanoes were raging and spewing fiery lava. The struggle for Pavur Ilai Arani and Palai Ere Ilai Aprati was going on relentlessly. The two beauties were fighting a furious battle with swords and swords. Sparks flew as the sharp swords of both sides clashed in the struggle. The sharpened spears hit each other and threw the flame. Two bolts of lightning crossed each other in the darkened sky, both throbbing together. Two fiercely beautiful tigresses hugged each other and bled profusely with their claws. Two monstrously beautiful cobras took the picture and swung their sharp, thin red tongues out to devour each other. The struggle was going on without rest for the youth of Palyara. The two beauties were fighting a furious battle with swords and swords. Sparks flew as the sharp swords of both sides clashed in the struggle. The sharpened spears hit each other and threw the flame. Two bolts of lightning crossed each other in the darkened sky, both throbbing together. Two fiercely beautiful tigresses hugged each other and bled profusely with their claws. Two monstrously beautiful cobras took the picture and swung their sharp, thin red tongues out to devour each other. The struggle was going on without rest for the youth of Palyara. The two beauties were fighting a furious battle with swords and swords. Sparks flew as the sharp swords of both sides clashed in the struggle. The sharpened spears hit each other and threw the flame. Two bolts of lightning crossed each other in the darkened sky, both throbbing together. Two fiercely beautiful tigresses hugged each other and bled profusely with their claws. Two monstrously beautiful cobras took the picture and swung their sharp, thin red tongues out to devour each other. Sparks flew as the sharp swords of both sides clashed in the struggle. The sharpened spears hit each other and threw the flame. Two bolts of lightning crossed each other in the darkened sky both throbbing together. Two fiercely beautiful tigresses hugged each other and bled profusely with their claws. Two monstrously beautiful cobras took the picture and swung their sharp, thin red tongues out to devour each other. Sparks flew as the sharp swords of both sides clashed in the struggle. The sharpened spears hit each other and threw the flame. Two bolts of lightning crossed each other in the darkened sky, both throbbing together. 
Two fiercely beautiful tigresses hugged each other and bled profusely with their claws. Two monstrously beautiful cobras took the picture and swung their sharp, thin red tongues out to devour each other. In this wondrous struggle they were excited, they thrashed in agony and anguish. Not participating in the excitement of the city dwellers and not understanding the struggle of these two Chandromedas, only one soul was suffering. Princess Vanathi of Kajumbalar doesn't have time to talk to the younger brat these days. She was not interested in anything outside except when she was with her sister. She created a lonely world within herself and wandered in it. 